If you had the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? The mindsets of the African people about agriculture. Wow. Agriculture is not only about farming. Agriculture is about food production, value addition, retail and marketing, storage, and waste management. The value chain is long. Many times people see farming as a punishment, so they see agriculture as a punishment. Yeah. Because right from school, um, anytime we do something bad, the teacher or our tutor says, go and take a hoe and start weeding. So we've all grown up to think that the agriculture sector is not a place uh, for the youth. But yeah. trust me, agriculture provides more than 25% of the continent's GDP. In fact, more than half of the African workforce um, is employed by the agriculture sector. Mm. And that means that Africa is capable of feeding itself and feeding the world. If someone ever told me that there's going to be a farmer who intentionally grow this crop, I would say that you're a liar. Because this used to be our football when we were growing up. My name is uh, Millicent Adoboy, Deputy CEO of Achiever Foods Limited. Achiever Foods Limited um, is an award-winning company. Um, Achiever Foods Limited is on a mission to save lives through organically grown um, turkey berry fruits um, that we process and add value to them into teas, juices, cereal mix powders, and jam spreads. What keeps you moving? The motivation and the passion to see that people eat healthy diets, eat healthy foods. The fact that we are creating jobs, improving the livelihoods of people and contributing to food security and especially a shared African prosperity. That is really what keeps me moving. What an exciting time to be alive. I feel super excited whenever I see Africans embracing value addition. The time of exporting raw materials are over. And you're an African listening to me. Can you just raise your hands and say hallelujah? I've known this all my life. I've used this all my life. This is what my mom taught me, that in case I need blood in my body, this is what I need to use. But never did I know that you can actually add value to this to have a turkey berry tea. Never did I know that you can have a whole turkey berry mixed with honey and ginger. What an exciting thing time to be an African. The revolution is happening and I'm telling each and every African it's about time you get involved. We are not leaving any African behind. We are no longer exporting our raw materials. We are adding value to our raw materials right here in Africa to boost the agriculture sector, to create more jobs in Africa, for us to use that money that comes from value addition to develop Africa. And what makes me more happy to do this story is the fact that this was done by a young woman. I mean, when you give women the chance, they know how to take care of things. But the fact that she's young, it means that young Africans are taking control of their own narrative. They are changing their narrative that agriculture is not for young people. Listen, I'm so excited to talk to this young lady. And I know you're also excited. Africa is the future, and we are the future of Africa. Hi! Hi, Billy. Woo, welcome. Thank you. Have you been waiting for me for a very long time? Yes, to the Daliha world. Do you know why I'm here? Tell me. I'm here to celebrate you. Oh, really? Oh, man. Because I feel like you deserve to be celebrated. Oh, I've, I've known this all my life, mm -hmm. but I never knew that I can get tea out of it. Yes. Value addition. 
value addition. Yes, it is. Enough of Africans exporting raw materials. Yes, because Africa is still a net importer of agricultural products. In fact, every year we spend over 50 you know, billion dollars in importing foods. And you are changing that narrative in your yes. own way. Yes, we are. And that is why I'm here to celebrate you. Wow, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I was born in Takradi. Okay. And I came to Accra to hustle. Really? Because this is the land of hustlers. Mm -hmm. Did you get this idea from school? This no. whole value addition that you're doing in here, you got it from KNUST? Value addition, yes. But turning this into teas, jams, juices, powders, it was another level of idea. <laughs> Listen, we are living in a country that right after school, mm -hmm. it's hard to get a job. Yes. And our education system does not encourage us to create our own business. Yes. Then, so which true. means that as soon as you got out of school, you started your own business as you learned food science because you're doing something that is related to what you learned in school. No. I searched for jobs. Just like you said, the educational system doesn't support entrepreneurship. Yeah. They give you the mindset that finish school, go get a job, sit in an AC, and just have a good time. No, and get married. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so I also followed that terrain. Hmm. I struggled to get a job, sincerely. And then finally, I just said, no way, I have to hustle. Did you get a job? I still didn't get a job. So I had to go through Medina, selling on the streets. So you mean after having a degree? Yeah, in do, food science. In food science, doing your national service? Yes. You end up selling... Imported perfumes, perfumes from China. Because I, I struggled to get a job. You struggled to get a yes. job? Yes. That was when I realized unemployment in Africa is real. <laughs> I am a victim of it. I went to many organizations, applied for jobs, I didn't get a job. I needed to make a living because many times I go to bed hungry. I wake up in the morning, I can't even buy a sanitary pad. And I'm a woman. Was there a guarantee that when you come here in the morning, somebody will come and buy from you? Was there a guarantee that you, you go home selling one thing in a day? I just wanted to give it a try. That was a risk I took because I needed to get on the road and make a living. I needed to make something out of my life. In fact, many times when I sell here, I see my other colleagues walking in their suits and asking me, Millicent, why didn't you get a job? I tell them, no, I didn't get a job. And this was what I was doing. Sometimes when I come to sell these perfumes, I make as low as 10 CD a day. There were days that I didn't even sell anything. Wow. And I had to borrow money for transport home. So unemployment is real. The youth, we are suffering in Africa. <laughs> My mom would be so happy if I give her this as a gift. So but I never no. knew, like, people are growing this. Yeah. In Ghana? Yeah. How? Yeah, they are. When we are. We, we are? Yes. W why take it berries? So in 2016, I almost died due to iron deficiency anemia. Almost died? Yeah. This malnutrition disease compelled me to quit my job. And one day I was just at work and I had a blackout. And the next time I saw myself on a hospital bed, then I woke up, I asked the doctor, what am I doing here? I'm supposed to be at work. They said you were rushed here a few, you know, minutes ago because you had a blackout. I said, what? Blackout? Then when they checked my blood level, it was as low as 4.3 on a scale of 15. The first day, they got blood transfusions. In fact, at the time they admitted me at the hospital, there was no blood in the blood bank. <laughs> and that was where the whole thing started. I said, Lord, am I going to die oh. of iron deficiency anemia? They did blood transfusions upon transfusions. I was not still recovering. Then one morning, I would say it was an angel. One doctor walked to my bed and then he said, Lady, I know other women 
who have died of this iron deficiency anemia, this malnutrition. Their blood was as low as 7, 8, they died. If yours is 4.3, I can assure you, you will not see the sun rise tomorrow. I said, doctor, what do I do? And the doctor says, well, there is this crop called turkey berries. In Ghana, they call it abedru. Hmm. Some call it kuhun suswa. Hmm. In fact, some call it akosia gidi gidi. <laughs> you know, when he said he was like gidi gidi, I said, I don't know about it. So my husband went to the streets, the market, looking for this turkey berries. And then when he got to the market, he saw that the market women had laid it on the floor in clusters, and they were selling it for 50 pesos, one CD. Then he bought it in this form, just like this. Yeah, just Took like it that. Took home washed it, blended it into juice, into powders, and then I started adding it to my meals. Within two weeks, from 4.3, my blood increased to 10.3. Wow. I said, whoa! Wait a minute before you continue. <laughs> so I guess the Samantraba brought you back from the ghost world because this is what we call it the... <laughs> It did. No, it's not. <laughs> Truly, this is in Saman Traba. Yes. Whoever discovered this name was in the spirit. <laughs> a big shout out to people from Takradi, man. <laughs> After yes. I left the hospital, I told my husband, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to embark on a campaign against malnutrition. Hence, and that is value how addition this to Turkey Berry. Value addition to Turkey Berry. Do you born. have your own farm? We don't own the farms, we partner with the smallholder farmers, so they own the farms and then uh, we train them on how to grow it, how to nurse it, how to transplant and then they grow it for us and then we provide a ready market for their farm produce. Hey. The first night company no night to today then. We go to our market. But since I want to do any baby baby them no. Ah, we go to my company. Company for no. So she the company buy and since I the skaka crab oko to kumu. Oh, after I have started. After I have started. After I scan the job. Since I work, I work then. Oh, instead of work, I can't work. The Obajina want to go no. I share out then. Oh, we are in market. We are in the market. Okay. But they are going to have me say. Hmm. Since I no, I want to share them ma. This is why I'm saying that the government needs to support smallholder farmers. Not just the government, because I believe that the government cannot do everything. But individuals who have made it in life you know we need to come up with um, something that support people like this i mean uh, if we have something like Wadamaya support for smallholder farmers i think it's going to make sense so that we can be able to i mean buy them equipment that they need so that they can feed us because everybody depends on a farmer i don't know who doesn't depend on the farmer Let me tell you the challenges we had when we started. Mm. What are the, some of the challenges? These women farmers are used to growing staple crops like maize, sorghum, because there's ready market for these crops. Mm. When we told them about turkey berries, they said, ah, for turkey berries, we just find it in the backyard, in the bush. They grow on themselves. Mm. No one grows them. I said, no, you know what? We've added value to sure. it. If you grow this for us, we will provide ready market for the farm produce and it will improve your income levels and your livelihoods. And some of them said, no, we don't believe in this, we will not do it. So we found two farmers. In fact, initially we, we tried to get a land and we couldn't assess land. There was another one we got, it was just too expensive. And we're now starting a small business. We don't have you know, funds to purchase a land. So we found two women who said, okay, we believe in this vision. We know that once you have promised that you provide a ready market for our farm yeah. produce, mm -hmm. we'll give it a try. 
So we started with these two smallholder farmers. And the good news is, anytime they grow their fruits, we uptake it and then we process it. And then do you know what we do? We began to invest in them. We train them, we provide them with farm inputs, um, like fertilizers. We also um, give them certain tools, um, Wellington boots, overalls, and all that. And that was how the journey was with the farmers. You know, there is a saying that mm -hmm. seeing is believing. Yeah. I got my in salmon trava. They call it turkey berries? Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> the Ghana green berries. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right here. And I really want to know how you transform this into mm -hmm. tea. tea. Is yes. this your factory? Actually, we started from the kitchen. Yes, so um, this is where we actually started the whole Daliha production of the food products. Let me say the first factory <laughs> of producing our Daliha uh, food products. So usually uh, we do the fruits, we do the packaging of the teas here. I sit here and I do the packaging of the teas. And then when we are done, we move on to sealing it with the iron. Um, we have to do this because we need the product to be safe. After this is done, we pack it nicely. And we close it. And then we put them on these shelves. Um, Sometimes you can just put them here. So this is the second stage of our transformation. How long Everything have... you are seeing here started from the kitchen from our home. How long have you been doing this? Five years. In fact, we just celebrated our fifth anniversary um, last week. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. How many people have you employed so far? 16 youth. 16 youth? Mm -hmm. Working for you? Mm -hmm. Paying them every month. You, you know, when I went to the farm, I saw the joy on the farmers' faces, knowing yeah. that as soon as they harvest their produce, you come and buy from them. Yes. You're empowering your own people. Yes. And in here, you're also employing. Yes, creating jobs. You're amazing. Improving livelihoods. You're amazing. So, you know, I told you we have created jobs for 16 youth. Mm. Um, Ten of them are permanent workers and um, six of them are casual workers. Okay. So usually with the casual workers, when we have fruits from the farms, they come and then they do the stemming okay. of the fruits. So um, today we have such of the stemming going on. Okay. Um, since you said you wanted to know how we produce the exactly. Daliha teas. Hi. So I'm, I'm going to. I, I, you know, I brought you more techy berries. More abedru. So uh, what you are seeing is uh, the stemming. Mm. Um, usually, the machine that um, processes this cannot uptake the fruit with the stems. So they'll have to um, destem it By so themselves. that it's able to go through the tunnel very well. Wow. And this is a very critical stage. If we don't do this, it will affect the efficiency of the process. Mm -hmm. But you see, the issue is that what they are doing with their hands now, a machine can actually do this. But uh, for now, we are using our hands to do it. That, 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 that is the biggest challenge, being a, a startup. <laughs> In Africa. Yeah. But don't worry, after this video, I know a lot of people will buy it, yes. the product, and yeah. then you have more money. But please give me my commission. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> where, do, where do we go from here? Yes. So, so, right from here, what so do So, usually do? after this, um, they wash it. Yeah. Um, they wash them in bowls. So, you see the pipe over there. Yeah. They do the washing there. Even with the washing, so a machine can do it. But for now, we wash it manually. Mm. Yes. Um, and that is why. The money has to come. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> this is our tea production room. When we dry the fruits, that is the techy berries, mm. we have to process it in this room. Mm. Um, but usually before we go into the tea production room, we have to sanitize our feet from any um, impurities mm. and bacteria. Mm. So just watch what I'm going to do. You step in here, you sanitize, you open, and then you come in. Like that? Yeah. And then this. All right. So this is the machine that does all the magic? Yes, please. So this is our tea packing machine. 
um, we actually took a loan to get this tea packing machine. Mm. Uh, because initially we were using our hands to package, to package the teas. Uh, but then after some time, when the demand for our Daliha food products was increasing, we decided to get a loan so that we could purchase the tea packing machine and then process it. So that right now you guys are packaging it? Yes, yeah, so we are packaging the tea. So um, when we pour the dry fruits, the mix in here, mm. then the tea packs it, then it comes out and then they pack it into their pouches. Okay. So every pouch takes 20 tea bags. Okay. Yeah. And I, I hope you can see this on the market. Yeah, so when we are done, we seal it and then we take it to the market to sell. So when it's dry, this is how it is. Hmm. So you use an oven to dry it up? Yes, we use an oven to dry it. Wow. And it retains all the nutrients, the iron, the vitamins, the antioxidants, everything is retained in it. Hmm. So the customer gets the full nutrients to improve their nutrition. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And then from here, we move it to the sealing machine where it actually seals. So now with this sealing, we used to use an iron. Mm. But now we have a sealing machine. Oh, when you started in your house? Mm. You yes, when we started iron. in our house, we're using an iron. Okay. And let me tell you something about this sealing machine. Mm. Um, so in 2020, mm. uh, we joined the Go Getters competition, which was organized by Agra. Mm. And um, we were given an impact award for improving the nutrition of over 400 pregnant men in mm. Ghana. Uh, you know, when they are pregnant, they need a lot of iron and mm. all that. Mm. So um, when Agra identified the works we were doing in the Ghanaian community, they awarded us with a grant amount of $2,500. Mm. So that is what we use to purchase this machine. machine. Wow. Yes. I want to see how the ceiling is done. Yes. So. Now, let me tell you something. Mm. We had to pack this because the expiring date and manufacturing date has already been imprinted on it. Yeah. Um, usually, if it has not been done, we'll have to use that machine over there uh. to imprint the manufacturing mm. expiring date. Let me tell you something about that. You, for During the times where we're producing in the kitchen, yeah. we use a stamp and then we hit it hard. hard. Um, you know what is going to happen now? What's going to happen? I want you to taste the Daliha tea. Have an experience with the Daliha spreads. Mm. Have an experience with the Daliha juices. And then the Daliha powders. I almost thought you didn't like me. <laughs> like I'll come and do all the video without tasting what they have in here. <laughs> so come over. <laughs> That's good. And let's welcome you to the Daliha world. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Daliha. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see wow. you. Great. Are you bright? Yes. You yes. mentioned your yes. name a lot. That's he's, right. he's my co founder the, and my husband. The magician behind the. The juice. Wow. The Daliha. <laughs> oh, is the bread also made out of turkey berries? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared because you know no. this thing is so bitter man. I, no. now I'm just having flashbacks of my mom used to beat me just to drink this. <laughs> I hope it's not bitter. It's, it's not. not. Hmm. Do you have sugar here? It's stevia. Yeah, stevia. Do you know stevia? What, what is that? It's an organic sweetener. Yeah, a better option to sugar. Wow. So what it means is that even people with diabetes can still take our juice. There's ginger in there. Yeah. That's right. Oh, this is brilliant, man. So you, 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 oh, you want to send me the tea? Yeah? Sure. Yes. Thank you. So you, you, you work in here? Yes, I do. So what were you doing before? Okay, before I worked as a customer service agent. Mm. Okay. And now? Before I moved now I'm with... And how's the experience so far? It's been it's been a wonderful experience, you know. Wow. Like I've learned a lot, Tanis. Learned a lot. Yeah, because I didn't know Turkey Berry has a lot of I mean yeah. there are so many benefits. When I came here, I was like, wow, 
what's my mom used for? I don't quite. Exactly. Some of us we used to be conscious with it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So wow. I've I've really learned. It's been an amazing experience here. The impact people experiencing the products, mm. the testimonies, and my bosses here are amazing as well. So wow. it's, it's been a wonderful experience. Here. five years we are seeking for funding support of about 1.6 million dollars mm. so that we can expand our farm size to 100 acres mm. employ 3,000 uh, women smallholder farmers mm. create jobs for 100 youth to process um, the tea the jams the juices and the powders and also take advantage of the free continental trade agreement mm. within the African continent to move uh, our products to Nigeria, South Africa, um, Kenya, Cote d'Ivoire, and then uh, Burundi. Wow. That, that is very, very, you know, a big one on our hearts. Please add, do. add Malawi to it, because <laughs> Malawi is now my favorite country in Africa. Oh, why not? We would. <laughs> Thank you, Malawi is. You see, I'm representing you guys everywhere I am, man. I yes, mean, and, and also we want to penetrate the U.S. into more states, because currently we are in five states in the U.S. Mm. We sell in the African um, shops and also we sell in two American stores. Mm. So for me, farming means a lot. Uh, farming means food. Farming means production. Um, and you know, farming is like a component of agriculture. Some people have this perception that agriculture is for the school dropouts, mm. is for the uneducated, mm. is for the aged, is for the poor. But agriculture is a lucrative, profitable sector that every youth should venture into. Yes, it is. You see this in the bush. If we see us serving it on the market, in the shops, in the supermarkets, in the homes of people, and you see them drinking it and paying for the value and the addition we are bringing to their nutrition, you see that the agriculture sector is a lucrative sector that every youth should go into. It's not a sector for the poor, no. Mm. It is a sector that the youth can take advantage of. I'm a youth. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and I've never regretted going into agriculture. I have never regretted. The bankers are drinking my tea. The engineers are drinking my tea. The presidents are drinking my tea. Daliha, save your life, love the taste. Woo!